Hi everyone, this is Joshua Fletcher with another DS Layer video and today we're going to be covering a BI4 demo end-to-end. -end. So the first thing I want to start with is the information design tool, which is the replacement to the universe design tool. And this gives us a lot more flexibility with our universes. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new project, which is going to hold all my uh, relevant files for the universe. And uh, throughout this demo we're going to be using one data source. Uh, some crime information from Australia. So within that demo project I'm going to be putting a new connection to my data source, so we'll call it demo CN, and it's just a SQL Server database that we're going to pick. I'm going to use OLE to connect to it and put in my connection details. And make sure we can test that connection and it connects okay. So we're all good to go. So we'll finish that and save that connection. Now that's a local connection. So what we need to do is make sure that we, we export that connection to the server itself. So we right click and publish connection to a repository. And we'll log on to our repository. Now once we're logged on, we can choose where to put that connection. Once we've done that, it asks us if we want to publish a copy to our local uh, project which is now called a CNS file and that's what we use to base our data foundation on. So the next step is to create a new data foundation and this is where we put all the table schemas. This can be single source or multi-source. I'm just choosing a single source and then I choose my secure connection that we published. Now that I've got my data foundation open we can choose all the tables that we want to map into the foundation so you'll be familiar with this process if you design universes in 3.1. And I've just got a single fact table and three dimension table. So we're just going to make uh, drop in our joins for these tables. So we've got three different surrogate keys. And that's just a drag and drop to create the join. And uh, then what we're going to do is actually change the join properties. Of course, we need to set it to uh, many to one or one to many. And this is used for detecting alias and context, context requirements. So once we've set all our joins, what we're now going to do is use a new feature called Families. So I'm going to open up the Edit Families dialog box and create two different families. This is colour coding for different types of tables. So I'm going to create one for dimension and set the colour to orange, and then another family for facts. And set that to a yellow. Now once I've created these families, I can have as many as I want. I can then tag tables with different families to colour code them. And you could use this for all different types of um, categorization. I'm using it for dimensions and facts. So that's a simple data foundation, which we'll now save. And the next thing we're going to do is create our business layer. And that's the uh, classes and objects that sit on top of the data foundation. We'll choose the data source there. Uh, and this is where we add in uh, yeah, those dimensions and measures, but they're kept separate from the data foundation. So we'll choose a data foundation to base this on and we can tick automatically create classes and objects. And you can now see this is the business layer where we've got the four different classes for the four tables. And I'm just going to start just by cleaning up these objects. So we get rid of uh, all the surrogate keys. And we'll just rename the classes as well, just tidy up the naming. Call that a fence type. Now that we've done that, we're going to change our single measure into a measure by right-clicking turn into measure. And then the next thing we're going to do is just add the <coughs> uh, aggregation function in the SQL to do a sum. Once we've done that, we can change the uh, display format to make sure it comes out as a number. And now we're going to do the same for the date objects. And this is a bit strange, um, we have to use a custom format to show that we want a single number so there's no commas or decimal places. Uh, I'm not too sure <coughs> about this and <laughs> I think it needs to um, be changed uh, so that there's, you can save your own formats. I haven't figured out how to do it, maybe I'm just being uh, dumb. But that's how uh, I currently had to do it, is to just edit custom format and add in that single number sign.
So now that we've cleaned up the formats, we're just going to save that. And we right click on the business layer and that's what we push to the repository and publish that for people to build reports on top of. So we're just going to log onto the server, we're going to check the integrity of the entire uh, universe project. I'll check that fine, so we'll click next, choose the folder to save that universe into and click finish to publish it. And that's a simple uh, universe built in the information design tool. Alright, next up is web intelligence. So I'll open up the web intelligence rich client and wait a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to choose our universe that we're going to base this web intelligence report on. And of course it's going to be the universe that we just built. So we'll log on to the server, see the available list of universes, and I'm going to choose my demo New South Wales universe. We get our query uh, panel where we can build our query. So we're just going to do a, quite a simple query, uh, the year, state, region, and the offence category, as well as the number of crimes. And we'll execute that query. And what you'll notice in the other tools is the query panels is exactly the same for all of them, which is a nice uh, improvement in BI4. So in Web Intelligence, we're just going to create a simple report. We're just going to get rid of the title. Just going to show how we can um, delete a column. Uh, for those who haven't seen Web Intelligence, we're rolling up the table here just by removing certain columns uh, and we'll drag out year as well. And we just get the number of crimes by fence category. You can see quite an ad hoc uh, tool, Web Intelligence is. Uh, also, we'll just insert a sum on our number of crimes. And if we do something like dropping year and number of crimes in underneath that table, we get another table with our year and number of crimes. Uh, so what we can now do is turn that into a chart by right-clicking and saying turn into. And there's our line chart of crime by year. We'll also add a second report tab. Uh, and this time we'll build a cross tab with the offence category, the, um, which I'm going to choose, year and number of crimes, oh, state region actually, let's drop that one in. And we get a simple table, probably best not to put it into the header. Uh, we'll drop it into the body and now we can right click and turn into a cross table as well. And that gets us a nice cross tab view of that information with the region down the left and the offence category along the top. Also what I wanted to show was a feature new to XI31, I think Service Pack 2, which is input controls. And this allows in-report filtering. So what we can do is choose the year uh, dimension and filter that uh, by checkboxes within the actual report tab while we're browsing, uh, either in the rich client or also once we've published the report to the web. So we'll add that input control in. You can see here now we get a list of all the years. It's quite easy to turn off all years and select one year and you can see it filters automatically. So that's quite a simple report. We're just going to save that to our uh, local computer and what we'll then do is publish that to the user portal by saying publish to. We've already got the link to the server so we're going to choose a public folder to put that in. Um, we'll put it into samples and web intelligence with the same name and we'll go and look at that later. Uh, in the BI Launchpad. So lastly I wanted to cover Crystal Reports for Enterprise. We're going to do a second uh, video later on with other tools but I didn't want to take up too much of your time today. So we're going to look at Crystal Reports for Enterprise which is the new Java Crystal Reports uh, client. There's also Crystal Reports 2011 which is the .NET version that you're familiar with. So what we're going to do is create a blank report uh, and we're going to connect to our server I just need to change the port number in the settings, so we'll do that. And we'll log on to our business object server. And we get the list of universes. So there's our demo New South Wales universe that we used before. You can see the query panel is exactly the same. And we're just going to do a simple query with um, year and quor uh, quarter and the number of crimes. So we'll run that query and we'll get back a standard report with the uh, data we selected. And you should know Crystal Reports for Enterprise is quite limited connectivity at the moment, not like 2011. So we can only really connect to universes and, and BW queries. 
So what I'm going to do is just format my first column. Uh, we'll get rid of the um, commas in the uh, year and the decimals. And we'll then just paste that over quarter as well. And then for number of crimes, we'll format that column as well to remove the decimal places. Okay, so now we've got our year, quarter, and number of crimes. Now, one of the new features with Crystal Reports for Enterprise, you can see now we can resize a column quite easily and it will keep the columns together, which is a quite a nice feature. I spent a lot of time in Crystal Reports 2008 and before that. Uh, having to line up columns. We'll insert a group on our year and we'll remove the year from the detail field and then we'll resize that, bold it and now we'll add a summary onto the measure of the number of crimes at all group levels. Okay so there's our total number of crimes by year and Make that a little bit bigger. Get rid of the decimals. Now the next thing that I want to do is actually uh, look at inserting a line chart into the um, header. So we'll drop in the chart here and you can see it's a little bit different from Crystal Reports 2008. Uh, we um, have the data tab which we can then drop the objects into, which makes it a lot easier. So we'll drop in the year into the category and then the number of crimes into the total. We have the options about whether we show the legend and title and so on. And once we click show chart, there's our chart here. We can edit the chart here. Quite a few different options on charting. So we'll just change the title, total crimes per year, and just resize the chart. And there's quite a straightforward crystal report with a chart and some data. So now we're going to save this into our business object system, and again we'll put it into our samples folder. And we'll just call that. Crystal Reports demo. Okay, so that's a Crystal Reports for Enterprise report on the same information. Now join us next time when we're going to be looking at Explorer, widgets, and dashboards. Thank you very much. This podcast is hosted and sponsored by Technologies. Visit us on the net at